Yes, indeed. It is called Lothric. Where the transitory lands of the Lords of Cinder converge. In venturing north, the pilgrims discover the truth of the old words. Legion, the Abyss Watchers. Hello, and welcome to Dark Souls 3. This is going to be our first single weapon class run. And in case you don't know how these work, what we do is we pick a single weapon class. And after getting through the tutorial, that is the only weapon class we're allowed to use. We have to get every single weapon in that weapon class, and we have to beat every boss available with that weapon class. And as you can see here, we're doing Halberds. Now, the knight starts off with a longsword. Mercenary starts with twin blades. Warrior starts with an axe. Herald starts with a spear. Thief starts with a knife. Assassin starts with I actually don't know. I've never picked Assassin before. I think that's a Thrusting Sword. I think that's a Thrusting Sword. Sorcerer starts with a Dagger. Pyromancer starts with an Axe. Cleric starts with a Hammer. Deprived starts with a Hammer. So, there's no starting weapon class that actually has a Halberd. So we're going to go with Knight, because they have the best strength and dexterity for what we want to do. Burial Gift. 
I haven't played Dark Souls 3 in forever. Oh no, I forget which one is the best. Uh... I think Young White Branch is the best. I'm not gonna bother with doing that. We're not gonna waste your time. Let's get right into it. Alright, so, another couple of rules is that on top of having to use a new weapon class each time, we have to use a different shield and armor set each run as well. So, no reusing shields, no reusing armor. But, just like I said with the weapon, I don't apply those rules until after getting through the tutorial. Because you're forced to beat a boss before you can actually really do anything. So, we're just gonna make our way through. We're, we're not gonna spend any time, like, grinding or anything like that. Based on the rules that I've set for myself, I could probably get away with abusing some of the rules, like, just sitting here forever grinding, but I don't care too much to abuse the rules that I've set for myself. I don't really consider these to be challenge runs, more of focusing on having a unique weapon, unique shield, unique armor set. So that way I can better learn them. I think this is a great way to help gain knowledge on these games. I think it's a lot of fun as well. Because, like I said, because of the not using a shield or armor set twice in a row, or not using it in two different runs, you can't just find a good armor set or a good shield and rely on that every time. So you have to kind of strategically pick what shield and armor set you're going to use, because if you aren't careful, you can screw yourself over in run like a 17 when you've got nothing good left if you picked all the good stuff at the start we'll get into what i chose later on for now like i said that does not apply until getting after the tutorial so i don't really remember how your moves work. I have not played Dark Souls 3 since before Elden Ring came out. Ooh, extra damage. I mean, even though I don't remember how you fight, you're still a tutorial boss. You're not that big of a deal. So, you go down, Coiled Sword, uh, Embered Up. I remember there was one run where I really wanted to use the Coiled Sword because I'm a big fan of Great Swords, and so I tried equipping the Coiled Sword here. You can't, it's... Yeah, it counts as a key item here, sadly. 
but the question is, do we count this as tutorial or no? I don't know, so in order to avoid that question, we're just going to keep on moving. And despite picking the knight, the knight shield is not our shield for this run, and the knight set is not our set for this run. I will and ye ash as is I want. No. Uh, we probably shouldn't be skipping dialogue since it's the first run, so. A pleasure to make thine acquaintance, Ashen One. I am but a humble handmaid of the shrine. Weapons, armor, trinkets, and spells. I've lots of little things to ease the burden of a weary traveler. And yes, I'm undead too, but not so charitable as to give my goods away. Ashen One, fetch souls and bring them to me. As is I want, no? <laughs> Ashen One, if my wares are not to thy satisfaction, bring me umbral ash. With ash, I'll fashion new wares. Is it not our sorry fate to sup on death? <laughs> Knowest thou of that soppy gossip? That cordial intrusion layeth the path to embers. And so thou art in need of a soapstone, ashen one. Then thy pockets will overflow with souls to trade to me. <laughs> ashen one, bring is it? <laughs> Alright, so the first halberd that we can get is for 1,500 souls from her. And here, as you can see, it requires 16 strength and 12 dexterity. This is why we picked the knight. It has 12 dexterity, so we meet the bare minimum for dex, and 13 strength, so we're down to three, but... Ashen one, be sure to bring more souls. Oh. <laughs> But something you can do is two-hand. So we don't need to meet the bare minimum strength requirement just yet. And also, I'm not going to use that. Well, a newcomer, I see. I am Andre. I serve at this shrine as a humble smith forging weapons. You're in search of the Lords of Cinder, I trust. A toilsome journey, I'd wager. You require good arms. Let me smith you weapons. I am a smith. Such is my purpose. So we're just gonna quickly do that to get an extra Estus from him. Pretty be careful. I don't want to see my work squandered. <laughs> All right, and then uh, there's also this guy and that guy, but we're not gonna worry about them just yet. There's also the firekeeper. Also not gonna worry about her just yet. Don't wanna waste too much time. Rest, so you get rest. And then now we can head on off to the high wall of Lothric. I actually haven't really used Hellbirds that much. They're definitely one of my least used weapon classes. Uh, in case you don't know, the way I choose what weapon class to do is with a random number generator. So, weapons are stored in a certain order in the inventory. So as you can see here, 
straight sword comes before halberd. We don't have enough weapons to show how all of them are, but... Uh, Dark Souls 3, I went with 20. I'm not doing, like, bows or crossbows, but... Daggers, straight swords, great swords, ultra great swords, stuff like that. And then even, like, uh, catalysts for sorceries, pyromancies, uh, the things for miracles. I am counting those. And, okay, so this Hellbird pokes. Good to know. I know that some Hellbirds have, like, a slashing attack. I don't know exactly what Hellbirds do that, or if that's not even part of this game. <laughs> oh, I do know you have a Hellbird, and so we could get it from them. But, better to just buy it. Okay, good, good, good. But, while having a poking weapon can be generally pretty good, I prefer having a weapon that slashes. Since... When you poke, if something moves to the left or the right, you just whiff. Whereas slashes are a lot better at dealing with groups and mobile enemies. But this is our first weapon. It will definitely be serviceable for now. Like, it's getting the job done. Yeah, see, like that, a, a slash would have gotten him. So, personal opinion, slashing tends to be a bit better. Not in every situation, but slashing tends to be more versatile. Which... I put a big emphasis on things being versatile. That's part of the reason why I like greatswords so much. They're not the best at any one thing, but they do everything pretty well. Which means that they're good for basically every situation. Maybe not the best, but pretty good. It's hard to go wrong with a greatsword. I already cannot wait for the Great Sword Run. I'm gonna be so happy when the random number generator gives it to us. I'm gonna beeline straight for the Claymore. It's gonna be great. I'm going to get bodied by Nameless King because for some reason I can't fight Nameless King with Great Swords. Oh, you're alive. Hello. Don't know why I thought that would kill him. Don't know why the game is freezing. It wasn't doing that before. The last time I played it back in like 2021. Oh, I have not played this game in two years. Probably close to like two and a half. Maybe even three. I'm thinking closer to two and a half, though. But yeah, I've not played this game in a long time. I'm going to be very rusty. And considering we don't have an armor set right now, that's not very good. In case you're wondering, Deserter set is going to be our first one. Which means... We are going to have a bit of a reliance on the enemies dropping their clothes for us. Hopefully they're kind in that regard. 
I have full faith and confidence that they will be very accommodating. Oh my god, I, that was a joke. But I will take it. Dragon. Hello, Mr. Free Soul Generator. So they breathe up top first. We had just under 3,000 souls when he did that. And now that he's gotten through everything, so we've gained like four and a half hundred souls. Okay. Now let's see, for this, we got the armor, we got the pants. So we got some clothes now. Yay! Really thought they were gonna breathe fire on us. Don't know why they didn't. Over there's the claymore. We're not going to pick that up because there's a dragon. And over here is a mimic. Do we kill the mimic? Yes, we do. This is probably not going to be very good because mimics are pretty tough. And I am very rusty. Or the mimics aren't tough, and I'm just... I, I was just really bad back then. I don't know. I got through all of... Like, as I'm recording this now. Ooh. Symbol of Avarice. Very nice. Can't use it. But as I'm recording this, I actually got through all of the Dark Souls 1 runs. Though, I'm going to be uploading this before most of the Dark Souls 1 runs for the sake of variety. But yeah, I got all the way through all the Dark Souls 1 runs. And my opinion on Dark Souls 1 has changed quite a bit. I think it's a pretty good game. I didn't think it was bad before. It was just very, very slow. And it just took a few runs for me to get used to how slow it was. And also to learn to light roll. Because in this game, the difference between light rolls and medium rolls is like nothing. Like I'm pretty sure this is a medium roll. Whereas you only get that in a light roll in Dark Souls 1. So that took me a while to get used to. But once I did get used to it, that really helped uh, Dark Souls 1 a lot. I hear something in the background, and I'm going to go level up. Welcome to the bonfire, Unkindled One. I am a firekeeper. I tend to the flame, and tend to thee. The lords have left their thrones, and must be delivered to them. To this end, I am at thy side. Ashen One, to be unkindled is to be a vessel for souls. Sovereignless souls will become thy strength. I will show thee how. Ashen One, bring me souls plucked from their vessels. Ashen One, to be... I... Ash there what? Ah, another one roused from the sleep of death. Well, you're not alone. We unkindled are worthless. Can't even die right. <laughs> Gives me conniptions. And they'd have us seek the Lords of Cinder and return them to their molding thrones. 
But we are talking true legends with the metal to link the fire. We're not fit to lick their boots. Don't you think? <laughs> What a sick joke. Asking us to seek the Lords of Cinder and return them to their molding thrones. We're talking true legends, those who would link the fire. We're not fit to lick their boots. <laughs> All right. So, we can sell some stuff. How? How? So, like, these souls, we can sell them, selling them, you get the same souls as you would from popping them in this game, which is very nice. We can also sell these, since this is the Halberd run, no use in having anything that isn't the Halberd. Mm. We can keep it because we occasionally use bows. I'll keep the symbol of avarice because it raises item discovery and there are two, I believe two, halberds that you need to grind. But this, yeah, no need for the night set since we're not using it, and good. Ashen one, be sure to bring more souls. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, we could... Ooh, do we want to level up or do we want to save for the 20k? Because... Uh. If you save 20k, you can get the tower key. And that allows you to get... Ashen. An Estus Flask Shard. For you to get another heal. And it lets you get the Silver Serpent Ring to gain more souls. Uh, I think for now... Ooh. I, I think for now we'll lay off that, but we will level up. Welcome home, speak. Very well, then take me. But I'm mostly going to level up health and endurance. Because. Farewell, I should make. You can never go wrong with health and stamina. Health and stamina always works, it's always good, it's always helpful. Unless you're doing a no-hit run, it will always bring you some guaranteed level of value. Whereas, like, I don't know yet if I want to go into strength or dex. I don't know how much vitality I need. I don't know if I'm going to keep using the Halberd. Or if we're going to go with the Lucerne. Because there is another Halberd in this area. Uh, later on. But I don't know its moveset. And so if it has a more varied moveset than poke, poke, poke. Then I'll probably go with that, but... Ow. Gotta get used to the speed of these things. Guaranteed souls is also good. No, 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 no. I do not feel like dealing with Pussy Man right now. Not when I'm not used to or comfortable with the weapon class. If I was using great swords, maybe, maybe. 
because I know great swords. But raw gem. Okay. Also, if I wasn't as rusty. Like I said, I have not played this game since, like, ugh. I think mid-2021. Alright, well... I forgot, usually when coming over here, I hit that guy as he's climbing up so he falls down. Then I kill this guy, then I kill this guy. Then I wait for him to come back up. But he just kind of made himself fall down. Which I appreciate that. That's very nice. Nope. The rolling attack has like a slashing part to it. So I've been using that. I can see the light of an enemy there. Because normally there's like an enemy holding on here. Yeah, there you go. He fell. And like, as you come in here, this enemy attacks you and then he climbs up. But sometimes he's just like standing down there. I don't know what causes that. kind of strange. Nope. 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 I know how those knights work. They are way too reliant on their shield. Which, like, we are... I already have pants. I don't need them. I don't think the deserter set has gloves, actually. But I'm pretty sure it does have a helmet. But anyways, we are going to be used, or we are going to get a shield this run. But that's going to be later, and I'm not going to rely on it. It's going to be more of an auxiliary thing. Might try pairing with it, because pairing was very easy in Dark Souls 1, as I have later come to find out. I believe with what I have uploaded now, I believe the last run I uploaded for Dark Souls 1 is the fifth run. And that's around when I started having, like, a shift and started figuring out, like, oh, parrying is actually easy in this game, and so if I go with a light roll and I focus more on parrying, then suddenly the game's a lot easier. And the reason why it took five runs before I even started really looking at that. A big part of that is Dark Souls 3, because I remember pairing in Dark Souls 3 being really, really hard. But I did one... It wasn't a full parry run, but I did try pairing a little bit in one of my Elden Ring run. Didn't record it, but... It wasn't super easy, but I did get used to it, and I could somewhat reliably parry after a certain point. And so I'm not entirely sure if Dark Souls 3 is just a lot harder to parry with, or if I was just bad, and I just had to get used to it in an easier setting. But 
there is an Estus Shard, which will give us an extra heal. And then this is the Silky, which we can use to free Grey Rat. And Grey Rat is the best NPC. You cannot tell me otherwise. You cannot convince me otherwise. That is the undeniable 100% factual truth. Also, he sells a halberd, so... Because one of the rules is getting all the weapons in the weapon class, that means getting every halberd. And so we're gonna need him in order to buy one of them halberds. Though we are going to have to do a little bit of backtracking. Because he's back by the bonfire. It's not too far back, though. It's just inside of this room coming up. Hello. Hello. Please don't stab me. I thought you were going to do the poke attack. I called that very wrong, but it worked out. And you can die. Not sure why this enemy keeps stabbing the wall, but he always stabs the wall when I turn the, that corner. But using the cell key we got, we can open this and talk to Mr. Grey Rat. Ah. You're no jailer, are you? No, no, you're from far away. And judging by the bell, you must be some of that unkindled ash. Remarkable. If that's true, then I have a favor to ask. Below the high wall is a musty little town, not the home of any lord, just a, a very old settlement of undead. An old woman, Loretta, lives there. Please, give her this ring. I, I, I'm not asking for charity. In, fa in fact, if you do this for me, I'll be sure to repay you in kind. I, I may be a petty thief, but I've more wits than most royalty. What do you say then, huh? Very well. I humbly place my faith in you. I am Grey Rat of the Undead Settlement, and I promise to assist you. Give this ring to old Loretta at the base of the high wall. Do your part, and I'll do mine. So that's him using like the homeward bone to go back to Firelink Shrine. And we now get the blue tearstone ring. So we can throw that on. And so if we get low health, we'll have some extra defense. And when we find Loretta, we can take it off to give it to them. But for now, we got the best NPC in the game already, and we can continue on. Oh man, if only the best ring in the game was this early on, that would be wonderful. I mean, if the best ring in the game was this early on, We'd still have four Estus. <laughs> well, we have three. You. I don't remember how to deal with these guys. So. I lied. You stab him in the back. And then he has a multi-hit attack. Yep. <laughs> I... 
am a genius who knows exactly what they are talking about at all times. At least when it comes to this one specific enemy. Ow. Shouldn't have said a thing. Shouldn't have said a thing. But that went a lot better than I thought it would. Uh, more pants. We don't need your pants. Uh, if you play Dark Souls 3... I'd love to know this because... I want to see if I'm alone in this situation where it's like whenever I get armor from an enemy, specifically in Dark Souls 3, it is almost always the pants. So it's like whenever I'm trying to grind an armor set, I'll have like zero pieces for the head, I'll have like three or four chest pieces, I'll have like maybe one glove, and I'll have like 19 pairs of pants. Never understood why. Now for this, if you do a run jump over here, you can pick up a ring of sacrifice, but if you drop onto here and then do a run jump over to here, you can actually get back down with zero fall damage. Which is quite nice. And... Something that isn't super practically useful, but... Makes me feel cool for knowing it. Makes me feel like I'm very good at the game. Even though there would be much better information to have, like what moves that the Halberd has. <laughs> we're learning it, we're learning it, but... You know. That's a shortcut back to the first bonfire. We... don't need to sit at it, because we are very good at this game. And Vort's pretty easy. If I remember correctly. And if I'm not remembering correctly, and Vord is actually hard, we can roll spam. It's Dark Souls 3. Lion Knight Albert. No, we don't need to summon them. There's also a, uh, the uh, Uchi Katana guy down there who you can summon, but only if you beat him. And, uh, you can find him back in Firelink. Now get this guy, because... The Great Shield guys really like to walk at you. But these guys really like to run. And so... It's a lot better to get this guy's attention first. Armor and an ember. Embers are very good. His armor... I mean, we can sell his ember. Or we can sell his armor. So we'll get some souls from that. And these guys. They really like to turtle behind their shell. Or turtle behind their great shield. Big weakness on their part. If your weapon can go through great shields in any way, shape, or form. Ow. I rolled too late. But shield, we can sell that. And here's the Lucerne. So that's the second Halberd. There's a much stronger knight over there. We can 
try to take him out. Don't know how effective this is going to be. I was going to say attack. And stab you in the back while you're doing that animation. And then you can get a charge attack off. I thought you were going to do your running attack. He's not big on doing the running attack, apparently. That's fine, we got him. And killing him gets you a guaranteed or find a gem. And we can sell the sword. I was hoping to get an Estus off of him, but... Either way, here's Emma. Ah, the wait has been long, unkindled one. I am Emma, High Priestess of Lothric Castle. Allow me to speak frankly. You will not find the Lords of Cinder here. They have left, gone, to their journey homes converging at the base of this castle. Head to the bottom of the high wall. Forge on through the great gate and raise this banner to proceed. This farewell gift is for you. It is the insignia of an old covenant. If you fear trespassers, dark spirits drawn by the embers, then etch this upon your heart, and the old concord will beckon noble blue sentinels to hunt these foul spirits. Unkindled one, head to the high wall's base. Go through the great gate and raise this banner to proceed. But beware, the dog keeps a close eye on things. The vile watchdog of the Boreal Valley. All right. I had that halberd to her neck that entire time. And didn't realize until like halfway through, but didn't want to move. Now, we only have one Estus, and so summoning that guy might be good. But I said it a few times while going through in Dark Souls 1. I don't like to overly rely on summons. I generally like to summon each person once. But... Even with only one Estus, I don't think I need to summon him. We don't have the decks required for this. So, even to Anning, it still doesn't do anything. But this does have a different moveset. The second light attack is a slash. What about the heavies? Same heavy. Okay. Alright. I thought that it was going to have like a diagonal slash, but that's fine. We can head on in here with our one Estus and not full health. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I don't really... I 
remember how you work too much. And our damage is not great. But once again, this is Dark Souls 3. We can just roll spam. Roll spamming should not work this much. Again, roll spamming should not work like this. Ow. Ah, uh, all right. The arrogance got us. Yeah, so that's what happens when you go in with one Estus. <laughs> and not full health, and not a full armor set. But, it's fine. I'm not too concerned about going deathless. I was spamming that light attack, and... And I just did not attack. But... You go down... You go down... Alright. We could use an ember... I think we're going to wait until... We get in front of the boss wall. I mean, really, we don't need to use an ember at all. Honestly. It does give a little bit more health, but do we really need that health? I don't think we do. I mean, ignore the fact that we died, but... Stop turtling behind your shield. Steel soldier helm. You guys are wearing the deserter armor set, right? Yeah, they're wearing the deserter armor set, which means this is the set. Yeah, I don't think they, like, I don't think this set has gauntlets, which means we now have our full deserter set. Congratulations to us. We can take a sip to be at full health. And... We just have to know not to be directly under them during that one specific attack. Because they kind of, like, flattened their body down for that. And that's what got us. Yeah, so you just need to know... Like... What part of them... Does damage. And as long as you know where the damage hits. You should be fun.
Ooh. Yeah, like I said, roll spam. Don't be directly, directly under the enemy. You generally want to be behind them. But, all right. We got, like we started out, we got two halberds, we got our starting set, we met Greyrat, we got the Estus Shard, we didn't cash it in yet, but we got the Estus Shard, we went through all of High Wall of Lothric, and we beat Vort. I was arrogant here, and it got me killed, but... I think that's pretty good progress for the first part, so, uh, yeah.